You ever considered going to one of these songwriting camps? Today we're going to talk to an artist who has, and he's gotten a lot of value out of it, so stick around. Welcome to Charlie's Open Mic. My name is Charlie Mossbrook. On this week's show, my guest is Mike Ward. He's a songwriter out of the Detroit, Michigan area. We're going to talk to him about songwriting camps, his brand new CD, and all kinds of other stuff. So let's dig in. Welcome to the show, Mike. Thanks, Charlie. It's really good to be here. It's good to have you here. You, you live up in Michigan, in Detroit? Yeah, I live in downtown Detroit right now. Uh, we've been down here about five years. Uh, before that, we were in you know, different suburbs, uh, I, but I grew up about 60 miles northeast, uh, right on the border of Canada in Port Huron, Michigan. Okay. I've been to the Raven in Port Huron. I have played the Raven uh, many times. It's a wonderful, wonderful venue, and Sadat is such a great uh, supporter of uh, music. Tell me about your first guitar. So my first guitar that I bought myself mm -hmm. as a, uh, a 1963 Guild 12 string mm. that I bought in 73. Um, but it was, it was just beat up and I bought it. I took it to a place in Ann Arbor, Herb David. Uh, it was a, uh, a luthier mm -hmm. and he, he had to grind down the fretboard and refret the whole thing. And, put new keys on it, but boy, it's, I still own it. I generally play it with only six strings, uh, but I love the, the sound of it and the neck. That, the guitar I learned on though, came from through my family and I still have that. And it's a 1947 Gibson LG two. Mm -hmm. And my mom gave it to my dad um, back in 47. My dad never played it. He was a dentist. And he said, I don't want to get calluses on my fingers if I'm, because uh, back then they didn't wear gloves, Dennis. Uh, he didn't want to have those calluses and be reaching in people's mouths. But my mom wanted all of us to play instruments. Mm -hmm. So love of music kind of came through that. She had a, a baby grand uh, piano that was the center of our house. And there was eight kids in our family. So we all played different instruments. And I picked up a uh, guitar when I was about 13, and then I put it away until I was about 18. I was learning uh, songs with a, a friend of mine who was a guitar player. We would be a duo, but I didn't play. I was singing with him and he was playing. And then the day after graduation from high school, he said, hey, uh, I'm getting married. We aren't gonna be able to do this anymore. I was at the point where, okay, I really like singing, so I got to learn to play. And at that point, I just dug in and uh, I would play four or five hours a day just to learn songs, learn Neil Young songs, learn Simon and Garfunkel songs, learn old Irish songs, because we grew up listening to the Clancy Brothers and Tommy Makem. At that point, I was still in church choirs, things like that. I was a vocalist first, singer first, player second. Until I went away to college in 70, uh, 74, I went away uh, to Siena Heights College. And I was playing guitar and singing in, in rooms, you know, in dorm rooms and stuff like that. And there was this one guy from Cleveland uh, who was a really good guitar player. And it was a bass player in a band uh, called, I think it was Rex Smith's band, uh, Sex Smith. And uh, he took me aside one day and he said, you know, you're a really good singer. He said, but you don't play very well. He said, I would advise you to, for the next six months to play and not sing. Just play. Learn to play better. Mm -hmm. And he was right. And it really changed, you know, me. And I still, for a long time, I think I, I uh, still am today. I'm not a proficient guitar player. I don't play lead. I play well enough to accompany myself live. You have a new CD and, uh, and yep. we're about to hear a song of yours. Do you want to set that song up a little bit? Is that from the new CD? 
Yeah, this song, um, it's called Why Can't That Be Enough. It is uh, the third song on the CD, I believe. The song was um, uh, inspired actually from a, a prompt at the uh, John Lamb uh, retreat up in Harbor, Harbor Springs. Why Can't That Be Enough is, um, is sort of the, a love song from the standpoint of that cabin, that, that life that you, you have up north, whether it's up north Michigan or somewhere else, it's sort of who misses who. I could use a little color, can't always stand up straight. And my dilapidated charm Rusted latches on my gate I'm where the pavement ends On the coldest lake in Michigan I am where I've always been Where I always wait Up here you're off the grid Little off the rails Off to the dock with one of those India pale ales no shaving in no showers Staring at the stars for hours On the times of your life Every breath you exhale I am here for you Waiting patiently Though my fire has gone out And my edges rough to touch I'm a part of you You of me why can't that be enough? Why can't that be enough? Once you fell into the marsh In your Sunday best Later wandered in the woods alone Scared me half to death the time you almost burned me down Leaving embers lying on the ground I am your silence and your secrets Always to be kept As hard-headed as the hardwood floors Never wipe your shoes Backwoods and barefoot life Is the one you often choose To say that it's rough in it Well, that doesn't quite cover it I'm a test of your survival Watching your every move I am here for you Waiting patiently Though my fire has gone out And my edge is rough to touch I'm a part of you You and me Why can't that be enough? Why can't that be enough? You say you're building character while my walls are falling down. Drive up every weekend, then you turn right back around. Leaves me feeling empty, and it leaves me feeling old. Don't forget to blow my pipes out before it gets too cold. Well, I hear you plan to knock me down Put a new one in my place All the comforts of your life So you don't feel so far away You work so hard to get that prize If only you would realize You really don't need all that much At the end of the day I am here for you Waiting patiently Though my fire has gone out and my edge is rough to touch, I'm a part of you, you of me. Why can't that be enough? Why can't that be enough? Why can't that be enough? That was wonderful.
Thanks for sharing that. Thanks. That's great. Um, let's talk about songwriting and the Lamb's Retreat and, and things like that. So you said you, you really spent a lot of time doing your songwriting on the LG2. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to tell, tell me about that process a little bit and maybe how uh, John Lamb's Retreat has helped, helped your process and helped your songwriting? So for me, for a long time, uh, songwriting was kind of a, a release uh, or a, a stress reliever uh, because I, I worked in a business that was where I was a creative uh, developer of ideas uh, for advertising for mm -hmm. 40 years. And in that business, you come up with an idea and you put it all up on a wall and everybody can have at it. Everybody gets their hands on it, right? It was highly collaborative and highly competitive. And I looked at my songs as mine <laughs> at that time period. I honestly didn't really want any input from anyone else. I didn't seek it out. But when I was anticipating leaving advertising, seven, eight years ago when I started sort of formulating a plan that I really wanted to pursue music full time, I thought I need to expand that thinking. And that has really changed my perspective on writing. And, you know, the retreat uh, for for um, lambs uh, right now online uh, groups like Song Salon, I visit in with a guy named Michael McNevin out in California. He does a weekly um, kind of writing group. I realize how much it can add to your own songs, you know, by getting that impartial view mm -hmm. of like, well, I didn't really understand that. Or I, you know, maybe think about this or maybe think about going to a minor there or think about this. And, you know, ultimately they're your own choices. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, Matt Watroba did a, a workshop two years ago that I was part of, and it was all about the choices you make. And not only the choices you make in your song, but in your performance, too, and in between your songs and what you talk about. But the choices you make as a writer, you know, ultimately they are yours. You know, when you find a circle of people that you trust, that you can go, okay, that writer man, they had a really good point on this song. It has enhanced my writing a lot. Even the songs that haven't gone through workshops, I've sort of workshopped them, you know, myself. But nowadays, it, I feel like every song I'm doing gets through one or two workshop phases, uh, either online or meeting with somebody on a on a one-to-one -one call where I send the song to somebody and go, Give me your feedback. But the Lambs is kind of a magical place that that one is because, you know, you you get your prompt and you have about 24 hours to turn around a song. Uh, my years of working in an ad agency really come in handy there. That process was not new to me, but I hadn't translated it to songwriting until the last few years. You know, when an idea would come, then I would write. Whereas now I'm more finding inspiration in lots of different places in learning to always be jotting down notes, always be uh, working on what could be next. Maybe, maybe you don't find a place for it today or tomorrow or even in a year. Um, so with your new CD, let's talk about that a little bit. We actually started recording in December of 2019. Mm -hmm. had all my parts ready by like February, the end of January, 2020. We were just planning and starting the plan for other instruments and other singers to come in when the pandemic shut us down. Mm -hmm. I had a producer, um, I had the, on the record, Mike Gentry and an outstanding, uh, recording engineer and recording studio and in, in rooftop recordings up in, uh, Grand Blanc. We were constantly in communication. Mike gave me homework to say, I want you to I want you to find 10 songs that have a sonic feel to how you want these recordings to end up. And that was that was a really good uh, thing because I love to listen and I and, but I don't always listen that specifically, you know, for that kind of thing to say, oh, 
listen for where the, the, the vocal is in comparison to the instruments and, you know, things like that. So once we had everything finally ready, it was uh, the end of August, beginning of September when we started mixing. And at that point, Mike met with us and my wife is my total partner in all of this. She's the greatest audience ever, but she's also really organized, really passionate about music, really knowledgeable. She co-hosted all the open mics with us, so she has cultivated a really good relationship with a lot of people in this market, um, as well as myself. So we set about a plan to write to all the DJs, send personal notes, send the material out, respond to people. Thank goodness for people like uh, Marilyn uh, Ray Bayer at, in, in Chicago who mm -hmm. wrote me a note and had remembered me from Farm uh, in 2019, remembered the light bulb song that I had sang and had nice things to say and then said, do you mind if I give you some advice on your materials? Which I was, I thought was incredibly generous. And we went back and reworked all of our materials, sent it, sent, you know, and at that point we had only sent out a few. And so, you know, we were able to use that to send the rest of the materials out. I join a lot of groups. <laughs> I'm on a lot of email lists. Um, I I have other friends who are releasing music or have released music in the last couple of years. So I followed what they were doing in terms of, oh, they got they got a review from this publication. I'm going to contact them and see if they'll review. I'm going to do this. That was the strategy, and so far it has paid off. Many songs on the record are being played locally here in Detroit. Uh, NPR station is WDET, and it's it's sort of a songwriter's validation to get on uh, the show Essential Music on the weekends. One of the songs, No Way to Live, has been on twice in the last uh, three weeks. And that's when you get little hits on your text or notes from people saying, hey, I heard you on WDET. Who knows what, if if I'll ever be able to do a full release show where I could gather you know, some of these, uh, some of my friends who participated on the record. And the hope is, you know, at some point we could do it. You know, by then I may be working on the next album, which I'm, I'm already, you know, starting to plan. During the lockdown, I participated in a challenge last April to write a song a day for 30 days. And I would say there's, there's a handful there that are gonna make it uh, onto another record and continue to write. About a song a week, I'm generally working on three to four at a time. Mm -hmm. And it just happened recently that I kind of got four of them in a really good spot, almost all at the same time. Now it's learning them well enough to play them out. Thank you for watching Charlie's Open Mic this week, and thank you to Mike Ward for taking time to talk to me and sharing his music with us. As always, please hit that subscription link down below. Please ring the bell for notifications of upcoming episodes. I always like it when you press like, and you comment down below and let us know what you like about the show, what you don't like about the show, and what we can do to make it more enjoyable for you. Please visit us at charliesopenmic.com where you can find a Patreon link to help support the show. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.